What's up guys, Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding and we're back with another video and this one is the 20 uh, most aesthetic physiques of all time. Now this one's pretty hard to nail down and people are gonna disagree. People are gonna disagree with a lot of these <coughs> guys, like some they'll have higher, some will have lower, some will have guys you know that I have in 20th, in first and so on. So I want to let you guys know that Partially I take in other people's opinions a little bit for this and I actually had a bit of help from guys in the comments when I did the video um, most aesthetic bodybuilder of all time and dubbed Richard Jones as the most aesthetic bodybuilder of all time and I took in a lot of people's considerations that uh, commented on that one on their most aesthetic bodybuilder of all time and I really looked deep into all those guys that people recommended and also I want to thank one of my mates Michael Galley who gave out some suggestions as well so I decided to split this video up into two because Doing 20 all at once will make a pretty long video. I'm gonna release part two, which is uh, number 10 to number one. This one is number 20 to number 11. And guys, when you see this and you see all the guys on this list, I want you to give your opinion on who should be in the top 10 and perhaps who I've named who actually should have been in the top 10 or been much higher. I want you guys to let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Anyway, let's launch into it. At number 20, we have Steve Reeves. This dude is the original. Back in the 40s, he was tearing it up. He won the Mr. Universe in 1950, and this guy went on to be Hercules. And this guy had a nice physique. I mean, for back in the day when really little was known about training and you know supplementation and eating and what you had to actually do to have a good physique. And he had aesthetics. You can see in this pose, you know, he's got that small waist, you know, someone who you'd say would go into classic physique these days. And he was repping it back in the 40s, which is pretty crazy to think about. And you can see him here in his later years in the Hercules movies um, after he finished his bodybuilding career, I believe. But uh, moving on to number 19 on the list, Barry DeMay, the flexing Dutchman he's known as because um, he was a Dutch bodybuilder and he had a nice physique. I mean, these poses where he puts his legs reasonably wide apart, like he really does have that sort of aesthetic physique and you can see it here. And there's a reason why I don't have him higher. I mean, he's got great aesthetics, but perhaps not like, you know, when you see this pose, not as what you, as much as you call some of these guys a little bit higher on the list, but I think he had a kind of cool physique, like that real sort of aesthetic white dude physique, you know, did not crazy, like you have the, you know, the round muscles, but not like some of these other guys you'll see higher on the list, but he's he's cool because he's one of the guys that sort of stayed around and he, you can see here, this is in uh, only, I believe at the 2018 Mr. Olympia, apparently, um, when he went there and you can still see he's in great shape, which I always love seeing, the healthy lifestyle from bodybuilding. This man, Danny Padilla, I love this photo. Like this photo is just iconic and I think a lot of people would have seen it and he looks sensational here. The front door bicep was his pose, but you can see on the left here, he's next to Franco Colombo and Tom Platt. So you can see he's got the most aesthetic physique there for sure. And a lot of people considered Franco to be reasonably aesthetic, but you can just see that front door bicep, he, he made that his own pose and he didn't get, I suppose, as much recognition as some because of his short stature, but he was a great bodybuilder. One spot higher, Lee Haney. This guy was eight time Mr. Olympia and you know he's the only one with eight Mr. Olympias that's gonna be on this list. And you can see that front double bicep. That is just a, such a famous pose for him. And he just, you know, yeah, I think once he hit that pose in the lineup at the Mr. Olympias, that's when he won it. And it was because he had the great aesthetics with it. He had the small waist. He had the really heavy upper body, like across the chest and arms. He just was so imposing and he still had great wheels to go with it as well which um, I really like, and I love the look of Lee Haney. And, you know, he might not be as aesthetic as some of these guys um, around on this list. I think the fact that he had that mass with the aesthetics really puts him high on the list, and he really wasn't missing any body parts, to be truthful, and he was so dominant in his era, and I think his aesthetics helped it. Coming in at number 16, Chris Cormier. Like, Chris Cormier was like, he had, like, the mass, and he had the shape. He just never seemed to bring it as much at the Olympia. This was at uh, the 99 Olympia where I thought he brought one of these really great packages and he combined sort of that conditioning with the mass, with the shape and just, like he just looks sensational. He posed well and you can see here, like his skin just lays so well over his muscles and it just, he's got that flawless skin and like for how much of a party lifestyle he apparently he led, that's pretty crazy. And you can see here, he's still holding that mass, but the tiny waist and the great aesthetics. And I just love that combination. And he's sort of reminiscent of a, I suppose you'd say a Kevin Lavoni in that way. 
but I think he just had slightly better aesthetics, in my opinion. And Kevin Lavroni was unlucky to miss out on this list, to be honest, guys. And sorry to ruin it for people who thought he might sneak in there, but nah. Chris Cormier just has that beautiful skin, nice Christmas tree. And you see here, great shoulder waist ratio when he opens up this lat spread. And I've got to say as well, with aesthetics, posing definitely helps it. If there's guys that have decent aesthetics, but they can't pose and show the aesthetics, I'm not going to really feature them on this list. And you see Chris Camille with his classic ab roll. And as he locks out that ab pose, you can see his abs are just awesome. So I had to include Chris Camille on this list. Coming in at number 15, we have Brian Buchanan, the man with the smallest waist of all time. Like, this is the, before the age that people were smash, smashing on waist trainers, and he just has such a sensational physique. Like, his legs weren't perhaps as big as his upper body, but man, like, his arms were huge. His waist was like, just, you, you can't train that. You know, that's just genetics, and his insertions are beautiful, and you just got to say, he's like one of the most iconic bodybuilders, and you see how big the dude was across his upper body here, and I think his small waist, some people may have said it was a detriment because it was so, so small, that it maybe maybe made him look a little bit smaller in stature. I'm not too sure, but he is sensational. And guys, if you want me to get an interview with Brian Buchanan, I actually just got his number, and he lives in Perth, Perth, Australia, which is pretty crazy, and that's where I live. So if you guys want an interview with him, let me know in the comments as well, because I'll get him on uh, desktop bodybuilding, and we'll do an interview, because apparently... He would be keen for it, and I just can't wait to um, catch up with this dude because he's an idol of mine, and my dad spoke about him when I was younger, and I was like, wow, that's cool. Coming in at number 14, Lee Labrada. Some people might have this guy higher based on his posing and him, the, the way he hit those classic sort of poses. This one's a famous one for him, and you can see like when you search Lee Labrada, these are the poses that come up because they're iconic. Like He made, made that pose his own, and he looks great in it. And this side tricep, that's the one that I saw so many times when I was younger. My dad showed me this photo and I was like, wow, that's aesthetic as hell. And also held a fair bit of mass too. I mean, he was up there in the Olympia and battling Lee Haney. So you got to take it off your hats off to Lee Labrada and the fact that he stayed in the industry as well and stays in shape and is, is you know still around, I mean, is a testament to what you can do if you sort of keep your health in mind in this sport and his physique says health. I mean, look at that front lat spread. That is insane. Like tiny waist, you know, not, not the biggest dude, but the lines are beautiful. Like you, you can't coach that. And he just has personified the aesthetic physique and the art of posing. So credit to Lee Labrada. Moving on, number, what number are we up to? We're up to number 13, Muhammad McAway. This dude, very small stature, much like a Danny Padilla, but he had some crazy shoulder weight waist ratio. And you can see on his turning back shots, he looks insane. And he's balanced too. And he had some nice cuts for back in the day. Like he looks great. I mean, he might not have been the biggest dude, but like you cannot deny this guy's aesthetics. And he looks awesome. I love his physique. And he, he's doing that same sort of um, side tricep pose facing to the front that Lee Labrada did as well. And I love that shot. I actually did that myself in a few comps. And if you can hit it and you've got the right physique for it, man, does it make his physique look aesthetic. So in number 13, Muhammad McAway, I think is more than deserving. And this one is one of his iconic poses. And I love that shot. And I believe Lee Labrada actually did that same one as well. So um, maybe they emulated each other a little bit. A little bit. Coming in at 12. Now, this one might be controversial. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where people place this dude in terms of aesthetics, but I love James Flex Lewis's aesthetics. And partly because of his condition too. You can see here on the side, tri uh, side chest and tricep, his glutes and hammies are insanely separated. And while he doesn't have the hardness that I'd want for the midsection, in this contest at least anyway, he does have just some classic, classic shots and taking out that midsection out of it, which... I suppose it hasn't been talked about too much in terms of the hardness, at least in this show, this is the 2017 Mr. Olympia. But those glutes are granite. And you can just see the shape of his muscles and his back double bicep. It's one of the strongest back double biceps, you know, in the 212s. Now he will be moving to the open, so it might be rivaled a little bit there. But when he gets those granite glutes, and if he can come in a bit fuller, he's going to do 
I mean, Jimmy Open, and I love that because he's got a nice aesthetic physique, and I love his shape, but I want to, you guys to tell me, do you, do you think this dude's aesthetic? Do you think he deserves to be on the list? Because I'm not sure, but I just placed him somewhere in there at 12. I love his physique. I see this dude, and I'm like, that's bodybuilding for me, modern age bodybuilding anyway. Coming in at number 11, at the top of this list anyway, Serge Nubray. This is a guy that apparently tra- trained for hours on end. He was all about just crazy volume. And he competed back in the days of Arnold Schwarzenegger and all those guys. And he had a tremendous physique. He had actually a very different shape physique to what I suppose a lot of people had. And, you know, you, you can call it aesthetic or you can call it, you know, you might not like the shape of his abs or whatever, but I like it. I mean, I like the shape of his physique. I actually had some people mention him when I did um, a Richard Jones video. And I can see why. I mean, he's got a great physique, not the biggest legs, and that's why he didn't place higher in the top 10. Because at first, when I thought Serge Nubray, I thought, ooh, top five. And then I actually looked at his physique, and I'm like, mm, maybe not. But in some shots, I'm like, oh, this dude is what you want to look like. This guy personifies aesthetic. And, and in other shots, I'm like, oh, maybe not as much. So I'm a bit torn on Serge Nubray, and you can see him his last shot, sensational. Like, you can not <laughs> deny this guy a top 20 finish when you see shots like that. So guys, I want you to stick around. The next part will be out within the next 48 hours. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you tick that bell button so you get notified of all my videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and give your opinion. Who do you think should be in the top 10? And if you name some people that I'm missing out, I'll feel pretty dumb, but I've got my list already done and I'm recording this video probably about the time that this one goes out because I'm recording it straight after. But guys, thank you so much for the love. For Xavier Wills, desktop bodybuilding, we are.